morning, everybody. Welcome to the Drive with John program. Nice to see you all again on this December 11th. Um, happy Hanukkah. And um, I hope you're following everything that has been happening in town. It's been a very busy uh, month with public forums every week and a lot of exciting topics being discussed at the Board of Selectmen meetings. There's another one uh, scheduled for Monday night and then another one on the 21st. So lots of Board of Selectmen meeting action uh, for you all to follow. And if there's any questions about anything that you're seeing or hearing at those meetings, please don't hesitate to reach out to my office. Uh, I'm John Mangerati, the town manager. Uh, this is Job with John. We're joined today uh, by Danielle Saban. She's the director of the Acton Memorial Library, Sharon Mercurio, Council on Aging Director and Executive Producer of the Job with John program, Cheryl Ball, the health director and leader of quite an effort uh, with our health team to try to keep our businesses and, and people safe. Heather York, our director of nursing, who runs our visiting nursing program uh, all the time and has been running contact tracing uh, full time uh, for the last nine months and doing a great job with it. So uh, another informative program for you all this morning. My updates are brief uh, and just that I encourage you all to subscribe to our town website to get the most current information. Uh, we try to publish stuff once or twice a week and not overcrowd your email inbox. And if you're in social media, I encourage you to follow us on there as well, because we try to spread out information there uh, as well. Uh, like every week on this show, we're going to talk about uh, how the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is impacting all of you and our town services. And a lot of things have changed in the last few weeks uh, at the state level. And uh, so we have Cheryl here to talk more about that. Uh, but like we do most weeks, I'd like to start with Heather with an update on public health generally and where we are with cases. Good morning, Heather. Morning, John. Good morning, everyone. Um, so in Acton today, as of, as of yesterday afternoon, we are cumulatively at uh, 410 cases. There is currently 71 cases in isolation, 315 have recovered, um, and sadly there have been um, additional deaths, so that number has gone up to 24 in the last couple of weeks. Um, some of the updates for the locations in Acton um, that do have congregate living, Life Care Center of Acton um, currently um, has had cases since the 20th of um, November. Uh, they're currently at 35 overall residents um, that have had COVID. There have been three uh, folks that have passed away, sadly. Um, 21 of those residents are currently at Life Care. Um, four positive residents are in the hospital. Um, six residents have recovered and have been moved to the recovery unit in the building. Um, and then one resident uh, who was actually there for short-term rehab and from another town did end up testing positive um, w after they had gone home, unfortunately. Um, 23 cases of staff are in that building. There's a handful that live in the town of Acton, uh, but the two recovered staff at this point are, 11, are at 11. So that's good news. Um, no significant serious issues um, with most of the staff other than one that I know of and I'm following in Acton, who's um, someone that's pretty sick. Uh, benchmark, um, the Inn at Robinsbrook, uh, overall since the beginning of the fall, they've had three, uh, three staff members test positive, but there's been no resident involvement, thankfully. So that's good news. And, and they fared well in the spring. So we're hoping that they will do the same this fall. Um, they have reduced, um, you know, stopped visitors coming in the building. People are staying in their rooms like they did in the spring. So that's um, basically what's going on over there. I did have a question um, from a caller that was forwarded to me from our hotline. Um, and the question was of the recent surge in cases, what percent of cases are community spread? And of that, uh, are the cases that are not community spread, what are the major spreading mechanisms that the contact tracing found in Acton? So out of, um, except for the congregate living numbers that I just mentioned, 100% um, of what I'm doing for contact tracing has shown um, that the cases in Acton are household transmission. Um, so within your own home, um, going to others' houses or having people within your home, that is the major spreader in Acton right now. I've had people from birthday parties, baby showers, 
um, wedding showers and Thanksgiving uh, most recently. Uh, the Thanksgiving number is concerning because um, of those uh, contacts that did become positive after Thanksgiving. They unfortunately have spread that to their household. Um, and then there were others within that Thanksgiving where they were affected. Um, also, uh, they've affected other people in other communities that they may have seen during their infectious period. Um, which, if you'll recall, the infectious period is 48 hours before someone starts to show symptoms. Um, so you could be, you know, in someone's home or someone could be in your home and they are infectious, uh, but they don't know that. And then they start to be symptomatic and then test positive. So that's the concern um, with this virus. It's easily spread. We're all indoors. So that just makes it a higher incidence of household transmission. So John had said, Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Um, I know that everyone is looking forward, you know, to gathering for Hanukkah and Christmas. Um, there are some recommendations on the CDC and the Mass Department of Public Health website for some safer options um, during the holiday season. I know it's a hard season for everyone, uh, but it is definitely a concern, you know, with the household spread for large gatherings. So if you could review those on the CDC website and the Mass Department of Public Health website for indoor gatherings. And I think Cheryl will talk about the numbers um, that have changed recently for the state as we took a step back um, in our stages. So Cheryl will talk about that. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention other than that is the weekly update of, of uh, color coding for town. So Acton has been in the yellow. We're still in the yellow um, as of yesterday at six o'clock. Um, we went up a, a 0.04%, I believe, but we still did get a little bit higher with our number of cases overall in the past 14 days. But I just wanted to note that a third of the towns in Massachusetts are in the red. Um, and then, you know, the, the color coding, there's not a whole lot of gray out there anymore, unfortunately. So just, you know, be cognizant of where you're going, um, what towns you're going to, where they are. Um, you know, big cities like Worcester, Lowell, Boston um, have, have very, very high numbers of positive cases. Um, so just be cognizant of where you're going um, as those as those color codings change on a weekly basis. OK, I hope everyone has a good day. It's good to see you all, as always. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to follow up with you on is you mentioned something um, in your comments that the 48 hours before you see feel symptoms is when you start being infectious. How long does that period continue? Are you infectious for the entire time you have symptoms or is it a certain number of days? So you are infectious the 48 hours before your symptoms start, or if you're someone that does not have symptoms but are tested as a contact, you are, you are infectious uh, the 48 hours before that positive test. That's when contact tracing is, we look at who you've been in contact with. Um, from the moment you're infectious, what we do as contact tracers is we isolate you for a total of 10 days. You can come off at day after day 10, at the end of day 10, as long as you are symptom free for 48 hours. And of, of those 48, 24 of those hours consecutively, um, you have to be fever-free without fever-reducing medication. Um, so there's a couple of factors. Um, if you are symptomatic at still at day 10, um, we do keep you on isolation longer. Some of the you know, vaguer symptoms of COVID, like um, the loss of sense of taste and smell, that can last a little bit longer. So that can keep people on isolation. You're considered infectious as long as you have those symptoms. The only symptom that um, from the spring and, and into now that um, if it's resolving, um, but you know, obviously better is the cough. Unfortunately, the cough for people can actually last um, quite a while, you know, up to a month or two, especially for someone whose respiratory system is compromised or has been compromised because of the virus. Um, so it, you really need to keep in close contact with your healthcare provider or board of health um, just to discuss those symptoms before you take yourself off of isolation. 
Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Um, Cheryl, good morning. Uh, how are you doing today? Good morning. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Heather, for that update. I'm doing well, and I hope you all are as well. Um, so I have a few things that I'd like to talk about today, one being the new restrictions that are going into place this Sunday, December 13th. So um, basically what the governor has decided is to move all communities in Massachusetts back to step one. Um, of phase three. And that what that means to you is it, this will reduce indoor capacities across a broad range of businesses and tighten several other workplace restrictions. Um, this is being done to respond to an increase in new COVID-19 infections and hospitalizations since the Thanksgiving holiday that is starting to strain the healthcare system in Massachusetts. Um, so the return to step one requires a closure of certain businesses, which include indoor performance venues um, and certain high contact indoor recreational businesses. Um, in addition, the capacity limits are will be reduced from 50% to 40% and the limit on outdoor gatherings will be reduced statewide from 100 to 50 persons. Um, so in phase uh, three, step two, there's some other concerns. So if you have or are planning on hosting an outdoor gathering of greater than 25 people, you're required to provide advance notice to the local board of health. Um, outdoor theaters and performance venues will be limited to a 25% capacity with no more than 50 people. Um, our, uh, the, the, the businesses that I spoke about that are going from 50 to 40% capacity would include uh, gyms, health clubs, libraries, museums, re all retail, offices, places of worship, lodging, um, and golf facilities. Um, so that's that's important to note. So again, that's from 50 to 40% capacity. And, and all those businesses are working with us to identify what their capacity is. Um, which they have been for the last nine months. So I'm confident that they can achieve that. The um, reduction of capacity um, will not apply to businesses that currently don't have a percentage based capacity limit, which would include restaurants, laboratories, and close contact personal services. But they must follow new guidelines that the governor has outlined. So basically in a restaurant, pay, um, it actually in general, but when you're eating now, so be prior to, you used to be able to go to a restaurant, you would wear your face covering before you got into the um, facility. And then when you sat down, you could take it off. So now they're asking everybody to keep them on unless you're actively eating or drinking. Um, there should be no more than six people at a table. They're, you're limited to 90 minute uh, time limit. Um, no musical performances will be allowed and food court seating has to be closed in malls. So um, we, we are also urging you to dine with only members of your same household. Um, so for offices and gyms, the um, new guidelines include wearing uh, face, uh, face coverings at your place of work, unless you're in your own workspace and alone. And then employers are encouraged to close or limit the use of break rooms and patrons must wear masks at all times now in gyms. So those are those are the new changes. Um, for now for some good news. Um, so the state's first shipment of the Pfizer vaccine will be delivered directly to 21 hospitals across nine counties, as well as to the Department of Public Health Immunization Lab. Doses will then be distributed for access to 74 hospitals across all 14 counties for frontline medical workers. The next doses of the vaccine will be allocated to the federal pharmacy program to begin vaccinating staff and residents of skilled nursing facilities, rest homes, and assisted living residences. So the initial vaccines are dedicated for, um, and actually um, on your screen, if you're viewing, you can actually see the list of the phases. Sorry, phase, the phase one is going to be for clinical and non-healthcare workers, uh, long-term care facilities, police, fire, and emergency medical, congregate care settings, home-based healthcare workers, and healthcare workers during non, uh, doing non-COVID-facing care. So that is anticipated um, through, to happen through the months of December to February. Phase two will happen in the months of February to April, and that'll include 
uh, some individuals with two or more comorbidities or who are, who are identified as being high risk for complications of the virus. Um, early education, K through 12, grocery, utility, food and agriculture, sanitation, public works, and public health workers, and all adults, adults over the age of 65. And it also includes individuals with one comorbidity. And then phase three, which should uh, take place between the months of April and June, will be for um, all the general public. Um, and then lastly, uh, we you should be this weekend receiving a mailing from the town of Acton. And this mailing um, is, is coming to all residents, and it's basically... Um, a lot of uh, general information that we talk about every week here, um, but um, it, you'll have it at your fingertips if, if you need it. So please be on the lookout for that, um, and we look forward to any feedback from that. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. That's great news about the vaccine. Uh, it's They're starting to roll it out uh, in the next week, I understand. So uh it's, it's something that we've been talking about since march and uh it's nice to see that it's finally an option for people uh so uh our next guest uh is actually our executive producer sharon mercurio sharon what's happening at the senior center this week or in general hi john thanks <laughs> Um, so busy week at the senior center we've been trying to do a lot of virtual programs as well as um, using Acton TV to um, publicize a lot of our our lectures and classes and that sort of thing. So some good news for those Terry Zaborowski fans. Um, we're sending out some new exercise videos that will be in the place um, same time slot, but um, a new class to look forward to. We also have Yvonne Benelli working on some new classes as well, just to freshen things up a little bit. The old classes will still be available on the act in TV on demand um, queue, I guess, or on YouTube. So um, those are still available. Our friends group meets Monday at one o'clock and they've been meeting on Zoom. Um, they're a fabulous group of folks. And I know maybe before you weren't able to come to a meeting because of the time and, and that sort of thing. But now that it's um, virtually, please feel free to check out one of the meetings. They're um, so supportive of everything the COA does. They actually our, our main source of funding for programs and lectures. So really grateful for all they do. So that'll be Monday at one. Just contact me if you'd like the link. We have mindful meditation with Liz Tuesday at two. Wednesday at one o'clock, we're going to be having Christmas music of the 1940s. Um, there's a program happening right now called Word, Word Galore. Um, that's been really popular. We've been doing that for the month of December and People are really excited about it, really raving about it. So if you missed it today, um, you can check it out next Friday, uh, December 18th at 10 o'clock. We have a holiday lunch coming up on December 22nd. Again, this will be a drive through event sponsored in part um, by Minuteman Senior Services. The food comes from um, Robbins Brook. So uh, we'll have you sign up You can just drive through the circle and we'll put the, the food safely in your vehicle. And then just another reminder, the United Way, again, has been so supportive to our community throughout this time. They developed a survey. Um, they really want to focus on uh, seniors in isolation. And that's something that the COA is very concerned about. I've been working really closely with, with Cheryl Ball as well as a, a public health issue. So it's a real short survey. It's online, um, but also there's hard copies available. So if you haven't filled it out, please do so. It is on our website. And if you'd like a hard copy, just contact me. Our number at the Senior Center is 978-929-6652. Thanks. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, so Daniel Saban is the director of the Acton Memorial Library, and she's here this morning to share some updates from the library. What's happening? Good morning. So um, as some of you may know, uh, we were uh, open for some limited browsing hours um, a few weeks ago and we've had to um, uh, cancel doing that so we're back to doing curbside pickup seven days a week so when your holds come in you'll get a notice that the holds are available and you can come to the library uh, 
Mondays through Saturdays between 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. You call us from the parking lot and we'll bring your materials out and place them on the tables outside of the main entrance. We're also available for the service Sundays from 2 to 5 p.m. And if you don't know what to read and you're having trouble picking out your next book, call the reference department and we can offer some readers advisory services and help you pick that next book. Um, on Tuesday, we have our adult book club meeting on Zoom. The title of their reading is called Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And the next meeting after that is Tuesday, January 19th. The book for January is The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. If you're interested in taking part in that, you can call the library and reserve the book. Um, and also because the programs are on Zoom, you do need to register for them before so we can send you the link and you'll be able to join. Um, the other thing that's going on is we are uh, launching our um, holiday gift program. Many of you have participated in this program in the past by coming to the library, browsing through a selection of new books and picking out one to donate. This year, because we're unable to offer the browsing in person, we've created a list, a list of books that are, is available on our website. Gifted titles will include a book plate with who you would like to donate it in honor of and can be reserved for first checkout. The list contains children's and adult titles that we'd like to have at the library. You choose the title you would like to sponsor and then fill out the form online to tell us which books you've picked and further instructions are included on the form. So if you're interested in that or any of the other um, services I've mentioned here, you can go to our website, actinmemoriallibrary.org or give us a call 978-929 um six six five five all right thank you john that's all right and if you can't remember a number you can always call the hotline 978-929-6600 and they'll help you get where you need to go danielle um you may not have this at, at on the top of your head but i'm curious this is the end of the year pretty much uh is there a book that was most circulated this year well, um, we actually can get those numbers uh, easier in January because we do count uh, the circulation through the end of December. But um, what we saw were some really popular titles um, around uh, racial and social justice. They uh, started to become really popular May and June, and that's continued as well. And, um, you know, we try to get as many copies of those books that are in high demand so everyone can read the ones that are popular. I look forward to seeing the number one book uh, when, when you have that info send along. And I guess another question, how, what's the most books that someone's ever asked to take out uh, on this curbside program? Uh, well, we don't have a limit. Um, the limit is kind of how many you can carry to your car, I think. Um, and uh, there's never been a limit to the amount of books you can check out. We do know that some folks are checking out a lot of books to limit the amount of times they have to come out for a trip to the library. Uh, we just ask that you understand if you have a lot of books. I think we had someone who checked out 50 books. It takes the staff a little bit longer to make sure those are all checked out properly and then carry them to the tables. Um, but yeah, we want folks to be reading as much as you can during this time. And we also have DVDs and audiobooks. We also have a small collection of board games. So definitely reach out to the library if you're interested in using one of those. Do you books. think they read 50 books in two weeks? That's pretty good if they did. Um, they may have a big family that okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just for one person. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for the updates and keep up the good work over there. And, um, that brings us to the end of another job with John program. We have one more, uh, that we're going to run before the end of the calendar year. So it's been fun getting in touch with all of you every week and we'll continue to do it uh, one more time and then we'll do some more in 2021. So have a good uh, weekend, everyone. And we'll talk to you next week.